In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the concept of a mathematical operator. So an operator, I'm going to represent it not by O, let, I'm just going to choose an arbitrary letter. So A hat, this is a mathematical operator. This performs some sort of operation on some function X, and it is going to give us another function. So this is essentially what the idea behind an operator is. An operator is just a mathematical object that performs an operation on a function and gives us another function. So by contrast, if I told you that a function of some number basically takes in some a number, let's call it A, and it outputs another number B, so the function itself can be thought of as a machine that turns one number into another by some rule, then an operator, so an operator a hat, is going to take in a function and it is going to output another function. So just to give you an example of an operator, we're going to take the differential operator d over dx. So what this does is, it this acts on something like x squared, and this is going to give us 2x. So we know immediately that we took one function and we got out a different function out of it. The same holds true for constants. So some, something as simple as a constant like 3 times some function of x is going to give us another function that is going to be distinct from f because we are basically multiplying by 3. So that's a general idea. So an, an operator is anything that really just multiplies or operates on a function to its right hand side and then gives us a different function. And the direction in which the operator operates is really important because what if I told you that I write something like this x squared times d over dx is this the same as d over dx x squared? Well, you know from calculus that this is not true because this is operating on whatever is on its right-hand side. So this is just multiplying the operator, but it is not the same as this right here. So here's an important property. Operators, so operators do not usually commute. And by commute, I mean that this property here is usually satisfied. They do not commute, which means that it is not the same to multiply this by that in this order. It is not the same to do that as doing the operation the opposite way. So that's a really important thing that we need to get around. Another example of a mathematical operator is the integral operator, because we know that if we take some function, let's say x, then this is going to give us another function, in this case x squared over 2 plus some constant c. So this is another example of a function. Now, where does this come in relation with quantum mechanics? Well, the first thing we need to define is a linear operator. Linear operator is one that has the following property. If you take some operator, so let's say a hat, operating on some function a, so some constant a times a function x plus b times some other function gx then the property of linearity of the operator tells us that this is the same as saying a times a acting on f plus b times a acting on g and the reason we're allowed to take the constant i is because the constant is not really being operated on. The constant is simply multiplying this function. It is changing its value. But the operator is only changing the function itself. So the property of linearity is this one. And when we talk about the Hilbert space, which is the, the abstract linear vector space upon which quantum mechanics is built, operators are usually linear so they will have this property differential and integral operators are linear because you know that if you take something like the integral of two functions f plus g this is the same as integral of f plus integral of g 
So that's a very important thing. Same as if you took the derivative, you know that you can just take the derivative of the individual elements of the sum. So those are linear operators. Now, what in general is a is an operator in terms of quantum mechanics? Because we, obviously we want to talk about physics, not mathematics here. So what is it? Well, a, a linear operator or, or an operator in quantum mechanics represents a physical measurable observable. So a, a physical quantity that can be observed and measured will have an operator associated with it. What I mean by that is that if you want to measure something like the position of some particular wave function or the position of a particle, then to that observable we're going to assign some operator x hat such that once we extract information from, from the wave function, so let's say we multiply the wave function like that, we will extract information about the position of that. Similarly, if we take some up, if we want to measure something like the momentum of a particle, we're going to have an operator for the momentum, such that when the momentum operator operates on act on the wave function of that particle or system, we will get the momentum. And finally, we have something that is the energy. There are other quantities, but these are the main quantities that we deal with in quantum. The energy is going to have another operator associated with it. And in fact, that operator is the Hamiltonian operator, which we briefly introduced at the beginning, and we will talk about it uh, in more detail once we solve the Schrodinger equation. So essentially, if we apply the Hamiltonian operator, to the wave function, we should get values for the energies. Now there's an important property of these operators associated with physical observables, and it is that to every physical quantity, the operator must obey the property that it is Hermitian. Hermitian means that the operator is equal to its own adjoint, and the adjoint is an, op is an operation represented by dagger. So basically, if we were dealing with matrices here, we would take the transpose of the matrix, and then the complex conjugate of each element, and that would give us the adjoint of that matrix A. And if this operation is the same as that one, then that basically means that we have a, a Hermitian operator. What that means, and this is a really, really important result, is that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are always real. The eigenvalues are always real. And we know this because if you take, say, a complex number set, which is A plus I B, and you take the complex conjugate of that, a minus i b all right the only way in which set could be equal to set conjugate is that the imaginary part is zero so the only way in which this can be true is if the imaginary part of set is zero and that means that set is actually just a real number so we find out we've relation to this kind of definition, we know that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are always real, which means that when we measure something like the energy of a quantum system, we will get eigenvalues, and those eigenvalues are going to be real quantities, because we know that it doesn't make sense to measure something like a complex energy. In fact, we can't really measure complex numbers. We can only measure real numbers. And that's a really important thing that I want you to take note of. Now, now that we have defined some of these things, we can start talking about some of the properties of operators, and hopefully that will allow us to perform some operations on functions and see what we can get from them, what kind of information we can extract from them. Because as I mentioned before, a wave function contains all the information about a quantum system. 
it depends on what how we operate on it that we will extract different information from so we will now talk about some of the properties of operators so I'm gonna get rid of this I'm gonna go back to the top and now we're going to introduce some very important properties okay so the first one I'm just gonna rewrite it here is that operators do not usually commute So you can think of this as analysis if you represent an operator by a matrix, and you can usually do that, then you know that matrices do not commute. Therefore, operators do not commute. There, there is another way to show this, and I will show you when we talk about commutability. But for now, just accept that this is one of the properties of operators. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the pro property of um associativity so basically if we have three operators multiplying each other then what we can do is we can group them into pairs like this and it shouldn't really matter in which way we group them we should get the same result so despite not being not commuting operators do follow the associativity property so we can group them into different uh, pairs and it will give the same result so this is basically that operation now the next thing uh, and it follows from this that if we take something like let's say we have a bra and now we have an operator acting on a cat so basically we have this operator sandwiched between this bra and this cat then what we can do is we can operate either on this side so we can operate on this cat and this should be equal to operating on the left hand side so basically the operator is now operating on this even though normally we don't define operations as going to the left this is how we need to define it because this kind of operation and this kind of operation are both forbidden and the reason for that is that well this operator is d over dx so if you have some function here some wave function then obviously this is not really uh, operating on it so this is forbidden and this is forbidden however if we operate on something like this we're essentially just operating on that function but you just need to take care of the notation so this is not the correct notation this is the correct notation we use and basically this should be equal because this is the same function remember this is just the complex conjugate of that function so this operator should obey this property and this is really really important because we'll come back to this in a second now the next property and this is a property of Hermitian operators Hermitian is that it must be equal to its own adjoint and we already talked about this this implies that the eigenvalues are real and we can write this in a more rigorous way by saying well let the operator operate on some wave function and basically if this is true this is the same as taking this particular quantity and having the complex conjugate of it so if the complex conjugate of this quantity is equal to the quantity then by by Hermitian operators then <clears throat> we know that they need to be Hermitian and the next property and this one is a, a really really important one so to every operator we associate an observable so to an operator just call it a hat we associate a physical observable <coughs> so a physical observable and what that means is that if we were to measure some quantity let's say a then what we would do is we would take 
the wave function, so we would take the operator A associated with that quantity, and we would apply an operation like this, so we want to normalize it, so we divide it by the inner product of the wave function with itself, and this two brackets here, these two angle brackets, represent the mean or the expected value, so you might see this in other cases uh, written in this fashion, so sometimes this is just kind of like a really fancy E, but essentially in quantum mechanics we use this notation, so you know that this is just the average value of the observable quantity. <clears throat> and because of the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics, when we measure something, all we're doing is we're measuring the average of it, we're not measuring it exactly. So if we use our properties of integrals, or we, if we use the definition of the wave function, we know that this is going to be equal to the integral of the wave function complex conjugate times A acting on the wave function dx, and this is going to be over the integral from minus infinity to infinity of complex conjugate of the wave function times the wave function, which we know is just the probability density of the wave function. So this will give us the expected value of the quantity associated with that operator. So if, for example, we wanted to find the average energy of a system, we would take this kind of operation, but we would use the Hermitian operator, sorry, not the Hermitian, the Hamiltonian operator, and if the wave function is normalized, then we know this is going to be equal to 1, so this is just the normalized version of that. So this would give us the average value of energy. If we wanted the average value of the position, for example, then we would take the operator for position and apply it to this wave function. And the same can be done for any other physical observable that has an operator. So this is a really interesting and very nice property, and we will make be, be making use of this later on as well. And another thing that I want to talk about, well, this is a, this is a rather trivial one, but I want to include it here. Let's say that you have some quantity like this, so I'm just going to say omega, so you have the inner product of two functions, and this is going to be the same as the inner product times that eigenfunction or that wave function, and the reason for this is that we know that the inner product of two wave functions is just going to be a scalar quantity. It can be a complex number, but it is still a scalar quantity. So it doesn't matter whether we put it at the front or at the back, it is always going to be a scalar quantity. So this property holds. So that's essentially what the properties of operators are. And we'll continue this talk in the next video, and we're going to be talking about some more properties, commutability, and then we're going to solve some examples to find average values of a particular wave function.